want to do an update on an outdoor sump pump system that we have in for a foundation drain that we put in. It's been moving a lot of water. We've been going through freezes and thaws. Been getting more rain than snow, but you can just see how much water we're moving. You can see why this house had a problem because it never had a foundation drain. I'll end up having to do a dry creek bed. I just wanted to give an update on this. I mean, it's just truly amazing how much water this thing moves. And I knew we had pitch, I knew we had fall, I knew this water would find its way to the ditch. We had a change in the grade right here, and it just broke. And if I got the water to that point, it was all downhill from there. But this is an outdoor sump system, and the reason why this discharge line is ran like this, in the north, we can't put a check valve in the line, okay? That's not an option here. If we have a check valve in the line by the sump pump in the well, what's going to happen is water is going to be trapped in the line, okay? Because you have a check valve in it. So it holds the water from coming back down into the well. You just build a big enough well to where when this water comes back down, it's not an issue. You don't want a check valve. This is going to freeze, it's going to split, it's going to be a liability, you're going to have issues. When you need the system the most, it's not going to work, it's going to fail you. So the water's pumped up, and then we have it go downhill. When it turns off, there will be a siphon effect. It'll siphon some of the water back, and then the rest of it just breaks. This is all by design. And we took a 2-inch and went to 3-inch on the discharge to break the siphon. So there's a bunch of different little things. There's a ton of details. There's actually two systems here. We got a backup system. You can see the two inch pipe on a three inch pipe. So that's why you see the two discharge pipes. We got a duplex in here. All right, seeing is believing. If a picture is worth a thousand words, what is a video worth? So everybody says in all my videos, why don't you run your outdoor sump pump system to a pop-up? And I always try to explain it, but I'm gonna show it to you, look at this. So if this was a pop-up emitter gushing water here in the north, now you can see what we're dealing with it would just freeze right up. If we take an outdoor sump pump system to a curb hole, it builds up with ice along the curb and eventually you're unable to get any water through it. Look at this. So this is still working. This is a foundation drain around a home. We have the installation video in our playlist under foundation drains, French drain man playlist. I've talked about this system quite a bit and I'm able to use this as an example of what we do when we're building outdoor sump pump systems. It's something that I'm able to seasonally show you the results because it's right in our own backyard. You can tell by the way the grade breaks if I, was trying to discharge this pipe flat, look at what the ice would do. It would just plug solid as it just continues to build up. Now I have a lot of fall right here, and this is done by design. The grade lent itself to this design. I said, all right, this is a gift in the drainage business to have the grade break. So we went ahead and we ran fencing to right where the grade broke. So we have a little bit of privacy fencing that came along with this project. We have this on an angle and it ends right here and the grade drops down. I would never take this line and go underground 
to here. People want to do it all the time. Why not just take the line, bury it over there, go underground, and have it down low in the grade gushing out water? This is going to build up and build up and build up and build up. And we might not see a thaw all through January and February. So try going two months without a thaw. And how much ice do you think we're going to have built up here? Now this is, right now we're, you know, mid-January. So if it stayed cold and this kept building up, I have a lot of room. A lot of room for protection. I'm pretty confident in what I did here. Okay, so what if the grade was flat? I would have ran the discharge line and I would have left it higher so it just fell. There's a lot of different things you can do, but don't take them underground in the north, guys. When you watch videos of some drainage contractor in the south, in the Sunbelt region, and he's running his discharge line underground, he's got his outdoor sump pump system, he buries his line, and he runs it wherever to a pop-up. You usually see it to a pop-up or you have a 90 fitting with a grate. You can't do that here in the north. And you got to watch your curb holes too. You'll have ice build up right on the side of the road, right along the curb. Always run it down the house or down a fence. Create a situation where your discharge line is above the grade that you're pouring down to. Don't go below. Don't go under a sidewalk either and try to take it to a pop-up at the curb. It's going to freeze under the sidewalk. It's going to freeze at the pop-up at the curb. I can't tell you how many times I have to remind really good drainage contractors of this. So, again, we've had a pretty mild year. This is an El Nino year. So our December was nothing but rain. We finally got some cold weather here in January. So if this was built up from December into January, there'd be a lot more ice here. But I knew at the time that we built this, and I was talking to the crew, and I told Francisco, as he and I always work through every job that we work on together, look, we want to drop the water right here so that it can fall off where the grade breaks. We don't want to bury this line. We want to keep this line above grade always. Now, this can just fill up with ice. It just can fill up with ice. It doesn't matter. It just don't matter. Now, normally this dissipates to the street. I'll show you some videos when it wasn't as cold, when it was mild, when it was just going from freezing to thawing. I'll show you some video. And I'll actually show you this running so you can really appreciate what this looks like, how much water this truly moves. Now, we did this at the end of the year. We didn't get a chance to create like a dry creek bed, but we're going to. We're going to do some stone and we're going to make this look really nice and we'll do follow-ups with this. But I just wanted to show you guys your outdoor sump pump systems in the north. Don't build them like the guys in the south. And I love all you guys in the south. I'm going to give you some love right now because some of you, your work is just truly amazing. But boy, you get schooled up here. The rules change. You get schooled. All right, let's take you into some video. Let me show you what this looks like when it's not so froze up yet. And then I'll give you some actual runtime showing this thing in action. All right, that's a cycle. 
that's a cycle. We don't have a check valve in here, so we're fine. We had a check valve inside the plumbing, inside the sump pit. The water would be up in this line to about here. All this would freeze. All this right here would freeze. When it shut off, the three inch pipe right here broke the siphon. So it would have pulled some of the water back in. We got a really big sump, extra chamber, not worried about it. This is emptied, it's on a hard angle. We didn't bury it under the ground because it would freeze. This is what we're dealing with. This is what it's like in the north. I don't know how many gallons we got on that cycle. And the cycle, I heard it, and I hurried up and grabbed a flashlight. So I missed, I missed the initial beginning of it. But that was a lot of water. I mean, by my guesstimation, I would say we probably moved a few hundred gallons in that cycle. So I just wanted to give you guys an update on that. I wanted to kind of see if I could catch this in action because it hasn't been an easy thing. Look at all that water. So this is downhill. So this dissipates towards a ditch. You can just see just how far the water's running. Now that was hundreds. That was hundreds of gallons of water right there. And because that ain't a long discharge line, there's no head. I mean, that pump is that pump is cranking. You know, right here, we're really deep with that sump, so I got to get a heater in there. It's getting about that time. I don't have a heater in there yet because, you know, we're like six feet deep with that sump. So this one is our backup pump. This one is our primary pump. They're on separate breakers. If this pump shorts out, throws the breaker, my backup pump's still gonna work because it's not plugged into the same breaker. That is key. You wanna do this indoors and outdoors, always. If your backup sump pump is sharing the same breaker as your primary, that's pointless to me because most of the things that take out a sump pump cause it to throw a breaker, most of the things outside of a failed float being the number one. The float switch wears out in them and they quit. But then the next thing is they short out. But all right guys, I hope you appreciated that. I'll keep you posted on this. Probably gonna end up doing like a dry creek bed to the ditch. This way, this will not freeze. As soon as you try to run this underground and take it somewhere, the end builds up with ice. I like when you're elevated and you just drop off like this. I have really good luck with the way this is set up. In the north, this is what we gotta do to ensure that our systems keep working and we don't have any failure whatsoever. All right, everybody. If you liked it and you appreciate me getting out of here in this bad weather and showing you this kind of stuff, give me a thumbs up. We'll keep trying to do that for you. And as always, until the next video.